Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi washabihi wa man tabi'um bi ihsan ila yaumiddin amma ba'd. Fa'udzu billahi minasy syaithanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. I welcome all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a brand new corporate connect session. I'm your Uh, head of the corporate relationship program Mansur Danish and I would like to thank all of you for taking your time out and attending the session for those of you uh, who have friends and colleagues who could not attend the session live uh, there is nothing to worry inshallah this session is getting recorded so inshallah we will try to make the videos of the session available on youtube as well and you can share it with your family and friends so that they can also benefit from the session a quick reminder Why are we connecting through these corporate connect sessions? What is the objective? The idea of the corporate connect session is to make all of you industry ready. That is the idea. You're all studying at the International Open University. Some of you might be part of the alumni as well. Now, those who are part of the alumni would know that there was nothing called a corporate connect session when they were studying. This is a brand new addition to the IOU offering. This is a way through which we are making you ready to handle the challenges of working in a corporate organization or even if it is an educational institution where you wish to teach. So you need to prepare yourself for all of this just like you're preparing yourself through academic knowledge, academic pursuits, you're developing skills within yourself so that you can apply them at your workplace in the future. Similarly, you need to have necessary skills to crack job interviews and that is what we are going to discuss in today's session today's session is all about how to crack a job interview we will take up question and answers as we move forward in the session during the session if you have any question i would request you to make a note of the question or if you wish to draw my attention to something specific you can use the raise hand button You can all locate the raise hand button in the screen, raise your hand, and I'm going to call out your name and give you an opportunity to ask your question. I always prefer that when we are interacting, it is good to have your cameras switched on so that we are able to see each other and we're able to communicate with each other. An important aspect of communication is that I'm able to get live feedback from my audience. I should be able to see them and see how they're responding. With that being said, using of your cameras is not a mandatory requirement for this session you're free to keep your cameras off i don't have an issue all right without further ado we're going to begin the session i'm going to share the slides up right now and we'll take questions accordingly now look if you're going to be typing something in the chat box it might not catch my attention right now so again i'm repeating myself if you have any question please use the raise hand button to draw my attention because i don't have any uh, co-host in this session today so i have to handle everything all right the entire session has to be conducted by me and the technology bit all right so i can't be doing two multiple things at the same time so i would request your cooperation in this regard all right let's quickly get the things rolling inshallah Mm, sorry. Yep. Okay. Can I get a quick thumbs up from all of you if you are able to view the screen? A quick thumbs up or a confirmation in the chat box if you can see the screen. which i've shared with all of you all right okay so we quickly move forward and that is the topic that we're going to be discussing today how to crack a job interview and you can connect with me and i'm going to quickly run you through this this is important if you're planning to get into a job remember one most important thing is that companies are going to review your linkedin profile companies are going to review your instagram profile companies are also going to review your uh, what you call 
just a second, your Instagram and Facebook page and so on and so forth. So it's extremely important that you have a very good policy maintained in your social media profile. What happens is many people engage in critical debates on social media, political debates, criticizing, commenting, uh, showing that they are right wing or left wing or middle or center, communist, and so on and so forth. Now, if you are planning to start your career and do work somewhere, companies don't want to hire a political leader or someone who aspires to be a politician in the future. Companies are not interested in you. So therefore, a very important message that I'm starting off with is maintain a good, healthy social media profile. I strongly recommend and urge people to have a Twitter profile and a LinkedIn profile. Facebook and Instagram is typically personal. Keep your posts private unless you are a person who is a public figure and who wishes to have your followers benefit from your sharings and your updates and statuses, so on and so forth. If that's not the case, maintain a private Facebook and Instagram profile. However, maintain a Twitter profile and a LinkedIn profile. It's amazing how many young people don't maintain a Twitter and Instagram profile. They're all on Facebook and Instagram because that's where all the fun is happening. That's where we are sharing pictures. We're talking about what we are eating. What are we dressing up? What are the new clothes we are buying? And all the short stories and Insta stories and Facebook stories and shorts and everything is there on Facebook and Instagram. It's all excitement over there and all fun. But the real places where students should be is Twitter and LinkedIn. And on Twitter, you must follow important handles. When I say handles, I mean in Twitter, you have these Twitter handles. For example, my handle is Mansur Danish. And I want all of you to follow me as well, inshallah. But apart from following me, you need to follow companies, follow prominent companies, follow, identify which are the sectors where you wish to apply for a job and then start following companies which fall under that sector. See the kind of updates that they are sharing. Try and share your views and perspectives and thoughts. I give you an example. A person who has good financial skills, quantitative skills, when he sees that, let's say, Coca-Cola company or the Pepsi-Cola company is sharing their quarterly earnings, a person with a finance background can do a quick review of those quarterly earnings and share his thoughts on the Twitter profile. What happens is the company is managing this and they're able to see it. When, when they do a random profile check of yours before an interview, they're able to see that, well, uh, here is Abdul Qadir who has good knowledge. He's putting his knowledge to good use. He's maintaining a healthy discussion format in social media or on social media, I beg your pardon. So have a good Twitter profile and then a LinkedIn profile as well, because you are applying for jobs and believe you me, LinkedIn is a very important source for getting your jobs, your first job. You have to be on LinkedIn. You have to follow company. You have to engage in discussion. People are sharing blogs. There are a lot of leaders, business leaders who write blogs, who share their thoughts. Engage in a healthy discussion and communication with them. Understand that these are people who might be CEOs of company, but you can start following them, follow some HRs, see some HR policies that they are sharing. Share your perspective with hikmah, with wisdom, beautiful preaching. Share your thoughts. When you do that, you're being noticed by many people who are following that particular person. For example, I'm on LinkedIn. I post a blog and now Abdul Qadir comments on it. When Abdul Qadir comments on it, all people in my network, all the professionals in my network are also reviewing or viewing Abdul Qadir's comment. So there is an opinion being formed that, mashallah, Abdul Qadir seems to be an intelligent person. I'm giving you examples so that you understand how to effectively use social media for your benefit. Now with that, we dive into the topic. In this session, we will learn about the etiquettes of networking on social media, I have already covered that. So I'm not going to be covering that. That was the first bit. Most importantly, the importance of developing skills to ace an interview, the importance of continuous development for professional growth. I will take your questions as well. So it's going to be a short presentation. We quickly run through that. Uh, 
the key aspects which you need to keep in mind in order to crack a job interview is you need to research the company. You need to analyze job description. You need to revisit the basics. And we're going to talk about what those basics are. Identify and rehearse potential interview questions. Review your CV and resume. Punctuality, being attentive, having a clear communication skills, getting into an interview mode, customizing your answers, being assertive about your strengths, being positive about your strength, being confident about your strengths, having a clear career goal, having a clear career objective. Study the interviewer's style of questioning. Ask the right questions and stay motivated. These are some important tips that I had for this discussion on how to crack the job interview. Now we're going to get into each of them individually so that we have a very clear picture on how to proceed with cracking a job interview. First and foremost, and this is the most important and critical aspect, any blog, any expert will always tell you, when you get a job call, go and research the company. This is a must. You must research the company. Get whatever information you can about the company. Extract the information that is important. What is the company's vision? You'll find it on their website. What is the company's mission statement? You'll find it on their website. Who are the key personnel in the company? Now you're being interviewed. If you actually go to the website and identify who the key personnel are, and you might just meet them in the interview room, you'll be able to connect better with them. Find out if the company has had any recent milestones. Be aware of your surroundings where you're sitting. I walked into a company for an interview and I know nothing about my surrounding. I don't know anything about the company. That shows lack of preparation. Almost 50% companies do not offer jobs to those who have little knowledge of the company. Are you walking into one of those companies which might reject you because you have not researched the company enough? It shows you on the bad light. Recently, for my own personal company, which is run in the UAE, Abira Consulting, we were interviewing some people for internship. And I asked the candidate, have they gone through the company's website? And the person very confidently said, yes. So I said, could you just explain a bit about our business model and so on and so forth? And the person said, well, you, all, you people are into hiring people for jobs and giving them job opportunities, et cetera, creating jobs for them. That was absolutely wrong. My company does not do that at all. We are into capacity development, training people, helping them upskill themselves through identifying skills and giving them training on those skills. No correlation between getting a job and getting your skills in order. So it was very clear that the person who was saying that he or she has gone through the profile had actually not gone through the website. What is an impression that you have created in front of me as an employer? I have a negative impression about you. So a very, very critical point is researching the company. I'll move on. Whenever you apply for a job, you must have received a job description. There's a job description which is telling you what is this job all about? You are expected to do what in this job? In addition to that, a job description also tells you what are the skills required by the candidate who applies for this job? Have you carefully read through the job description? Have you gone through the skills required for the job description and what the job is all about? LinkedIn has an option to apply for jobs. If you start randomly applying for jobs, you might end up applying in a lot of places, but if you think it's gonna be a game of probability that the more I apply, the higher the chances of getting a job, that's wrong. You have to apply in appropriate place based on your skills based on the job description, study the job description carefully, read through them. Every job will not be meant for you. And so you may not be hired for that job. Why waste your time and opportunity? Why waste the time of the employer? Now you cracked an interview, you walked in for the interview, not cracked the interview, but you've cracked the first place, which is you've been called for an interview. 
Be aware of the job description. Don't ask the interviewer, what will be expected of me in this job? So he would just turn around and ask you, did you not go through the job description? In fact, there are higher chances that the interviewer might ask you, do you know what this job is all about? So you need to focus on the areas of the role you are being interviewed for. And that requires going through the job description. Prepare your points to justify your candidature based on the job description. The job description is there. Now you need to show how you fit into this. How will you be able to fulfill the requirements of the job? Prepare yourself for that. When I say prepare, it means the preparation starts before the interview. You have to rehearse. You have to go through your experiences. Highlight important areas or milestones or achievements where you showcased important skills required for the job. Don't go into bragging. Don't go on stretching. Use one or two examples. In fact, even one is sufficient. But the idea would be that through the example that you're sharing from your previous experience, you're identifying how you're going to be good for the upcoming job. Show enthusiasm in your interview. Don't sound too nervous. Show eagerness in your interview, that you're eager for the job. You're looking for the challenge. I want to take this up. Avoid desperation. If you show too much of desperation, sir, please, sir, I need the job, sir. Ma'am, please, ma'am. You know what, ma'am? Uh, we, 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 my father doesn't have a job. And my mom has been also, you know, uh, keeping unwell. And we have a very difficult situation. So this job is really important for me. What are you doing? You're showing desperation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for all of us and save us from showing desperation. Be enthusiastic. Be eager. Have your self-respect in place. I don't say be arrogant. Don't be arrogant. But have your self-respect. You're here for a professional position. Be professional. Show your eagerness. Why? Because you have the skills. Sir, I have the skills. I'm ready to take up this challenge. This looks really exciting to me, sir. Now, you see, when you show these words like excitement and eagerness, I'm pretty enthusiastic about this job, sir, because I have those skills required to take this up. I can clearly see myself excelling in the job role and benefiting the company. Now, when I speak like this, the company is sounding positive as well about me. Okay? But don't show desperation. What happens? So I need it. So I desperately need it. Don't show your desperation. Your desperation never gets you the job. On the contrary, your desperation puts a negative image of you in front of the employer. Revisit the basics. If a job requires you to have certain skills, which you may have studied long back, but not have applied it for recently, study about it. Have a good subject knowledge of the job where you're applying for. You might be asked a tough question. Prepare yourself mentally. Prepare yourself for those tough questions. A particular job may require you to analyze data, data interpretation. Revise yourself on the subject matter. You might be asked to appear for an examination. Test how do you analyze data, which is presented in front of you. Prepare yourself for that. Organize your ideas and thoughts. Present them crisply, clearly to your employer, okay? So that's as far as revisiting the basics are concerned. Prepare yourself for potential interview questions. Tell me about yourself. Describe who you are, okay? Tell me about yourself. Well, my name is Mansur Danish and I love to play cricket. My hobbies are doing this, reading books. I like to connect on social media. Oh, how boring you are. Don't talk about yourself as though you're sitting for a school interview or a college interview. You're sitting for a job. Tell me about yourself. Talk about yourself. Introduce yourself. They know who you are. But talk about your skills. Talk, start by talking about your career goals, your aspirations. I am a person who's a go-getter. I aspire to have my own business 10 years down the line. I wish to gain experience and knowledge and understand how to run things. I aspire to be a leader in the future. I want to have my own team. 
whom I can drive towards achieving my goals and aspirations. I want to give back to the society. Okay? And how specifically? 15 years down the line, 20 years down the line. Talk about yourself. Yes, I'm fond of reading, but how do you talk about it? By being specific. What kind of materials are you fond of reading? I am fond of reading Harry Potter. You are rejected for the interview. Person is not interested in your Harry Potter knowledge. I'm, for, I'm into reading uh, business dailies. I prefer reading Financial Express. Now, when you say that, make sure you are reading it as well. Because it may happen that the person who's interviewing you has read Financial Express today. He may just ask you, what was the headline today? What are you going to do? So get into a habit of reading the right material as well. If you aspire to be a professional, read the right material. Okay? So talk about yourself. Describe who you are. When you say describe who you are, you're talking about your skills. I'm passionate. I am a confident person. Okay? So you, you use, identify adjectives and then give examples of these adjectives. Don't say that, go on, you know, giving a long list. You don't have to do that. Two or three important aspects about you, talk about that. Who you are. How should you be, how do you judge yourself? Who do you consider yourself to be? Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mashallah, I consider myself to be a good communicator. I can communicate. Mashallah, tabarakallah. So if somebody asks me who described myself, my description will hover around communication. I'll talk about my skills along communication, ability to negotiate, ability to train people on public speaking, and so on and so forth. Why should I hire you? Very common question. Why should I hire you? Because I need the job. Because I have somebody sick at home. Because nobody is earning at home. Avoid all these answers. Why should I hire you? Go back to the previous slide. Connect the job description with your skills. Connect them. Show them how you'll be able to bring about a change in the company. Why should a company hire you? Okay. And company wants to see leaders. So show yourself as a leader. It's not only about yourself. I'm a team player. I believe in team working together as a team. All right? It's not only about your selfish goals. Okay? So why should I hire you? Why do you want this job? Where do you see yourself in five years? Tell me about yourself. These are potential questions which are related to the job profile. Identify these areas. Okay? And accordingly, handle them. Now, if you have any questions, I can see one of you have raised your hand. So I'm going to start uh, giving you the access to the mic and we will take the questions. All right, just a second. Hold on. Seher, please go ahead with your question. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sir, uh, I'd like to know why uh, the question that you were uh, telling me, I got disconnected, so I couldn't hear the answer about uh, why should I hire you? Can you repeat that? Sure. So the question, why should I hire you, is connecting the job description that we studied in the previous slide. The job description mentions the kind of job role that has come up and what are the skills required for that job. And you know what your skills are which you are showcasing on your CV when you mention the companies where you might have worked in the past or in the school or universities where you took part in projects where you showed certain skills, key skills, connect those skills of yours to the job description which has come up. The idea to show that, see, no company expects you to come in and start delivering from day one. Every company knows that there will be a bit of unlearning from the past and then relearning new strategy, strategies and learning how to do the job in the new place. Every company knows that. But what the company wants to see is whether you have the skill and the attitude. Now, attitude is being showcased in the interview through your confidence. And skill, you need to talk about it and give examples, relevant examples. I don't have a work experience. What example do I show? Take them back to your university. Take them back to your school. Mention something that you did work in certain projects. 
certain festival, you know, universities organize these festivals. So maybe you showed some organizing skills there. What were the specific things that you did? Maybe there was something specific which you did and you did together with the team. Because companies like team player. No companies wants people who are selfish because they'll spoil the environment at the workplace. So how sh why should I hire you? Identify the job description, the skills required, and then connect your own skills with that job and show them why you're worth it. I hope that answers your question, Sahel. All right, we'll move on, inshallah. No other hands were raised. Yes, I can see another hand which is raised. Please go ahead, Banile, if I got your name correctly. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you stated it correctly. Uh, I'm looking at this. Uh, would you mind clarifying what's the difference between tell me, tell me about yourself and describe who you are? All right. Thank you so much. So Banile wants me to clarify, tell me about yourself. What should I really talk about myself? Now, you see, when he asks you to tell me about yourself, Ask him politely. So would you like me to walk you through my CV or would you like to tell me some, uh, would you like me to tell you something beyond my CV? All right. So now you try to understand what the interviewer wants to know from you. I'll repeat myself. He tells you, tell me about yourself. You have a CV in front of you. You know, you've already given him a CV. I don't have a CV now. I, otherwise I would have shown you a paper, but there's a CV on the table of the interviewer. He knows something about you through your CV. Still, he's asking you to tell me about yourself. So you need to ask the interviewer politely. Sir, uh, before I start, I would like to know from you, would you like me to walk you through the CV of mine? Or would you like to know anything beyond the CV? So in case the interviewer says, well, walk me through your CV. Well, then you walk him through your CV. You talk about your CV, your job. Now, when you say CV, walk me through your CV, I don't want you to memorize your CV, memorize your resume and start vomiting it out in front of the interviewer. Talk about yourself. See, talk about your educational qualifications, what you have attained. Okay. I, you don't have to go through your school and schooling, etc. Talk about your graduation, the late, last education. All right. Go into your working experience if you have any. Talk about some internships that you might have done. All right. What were the internships, some of the learnings that you had? And that's how you present yourself. Talk about your hobbies and passions also. If you are into reading, there's nothing wrong about it, but make sure that you share relevant reading material. You don't start saying, I read Harry Potter and so on and so forth. All right. Uh, but yes, along with other important reading material, you can gently say, I'm also into reading a little bit of fiction. All right. Now, when you say fiction, he might say, well, what do you read? At that time, you can say, well, I'm into reading. Uh, Harry Potter and so on and so forth. Well, personally, I'm not into reading fiction. So I have absolutely no idea what's happening in the fictional world. All right. That's me talking about myself. I'm not into reading of fiction. I read different kinds of materials. I'm more into reading self-help and history related materials and, and so on and so forth. So for me, I have absolutely no, no clue about reading material. But as I said, when you talk about reading, identify relevant reading materials for professional people. Read that. You're supposed to read that. Okay. Uh, so that's about yourself. Now, again, as I said, uh, there is no specific answers. Whatever I'm telling you may not apply in a particular interview. You will have to gauge the interviewer's mindset during the interview. And we're going to talk about that a little later. Some more slides are coming up. All right. Uh, Shoheb Ali, you have your hand raised. Please go ahead with your question. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Go ahead. Uh, please, my, my, my question is uh, about this first question. Tell me about yourself and then describe who you are. How different are these two questions? Please. Uh, well, Shohib, I'm not telling you that these questions are different questions. There are different, these are different ways that people may put forth the questions in front of you, all right? So we are not saying that these questions are different or anything as such. All we're saying is that the questioner may put the questions to you differently. All right. Somebody may ask you, uh, tell me about yourself. Somebody may say, describe who you are. Describe who you are is uh, about more, mostly a description of your personality. How do you describe yourself as a person, as an individual? Okay. So again, you have to use adjectives over here. 
Now, what could be the possible adjectives? That will depend upon your skills, etc., which you have. Where, why should I hire you? And where? Uh, why should I hire you? Oh, sorry. Where? Why do you want this job? And why should I hire you? Might be a correlated question. Tell me about yourself means you're just taking them through about what you have done, what were your achievements, your C some aspects of your CV. Describing who you are, you're going more into your personality, your attitude. And you can give examples to back it. So the person knows that, see, anyone will sitting, sitting in an interview can say, say anything. You know, I can sit in an interview and say, I'm very passionate. I'm, I'm a go-getter. I'm a team manager. I'm a team leader. I love to communicate. I can sit with team and work, blah, 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 blah. Everyone, anyone can say the same thing. But who has an edge? The edge is with the person who is able to back it with examples. As I said, when you talk about your skills, one or two skills, give an example. So I can share with you a very small example. And please, me, small means small. Keep it short. Don't start a long story. Okay, it should not, you know, talking for one minute nonstop is talking a lot. <laughs> if you study public speaking with me, you will realize that. Okay, so even a 30 seconds of communication is sufficient. But talk confidently and identify what your strength, weakness are. Any individual who doesn't know his strength, doesn't know his weakness, is not aware about himself. We all have weaknesses. Only when we know our weaknesses, we work on improving ourselves. Many people tend to suffer with emotional issues. They tend to react emotionally. Their panic button is always pressed. Anything happens, press the panic button, press the panic button, press the panic button, emergency button on, emergency button on. It spins with some of us. What are we supposed to do? Work on this. Firstly, being aware. Yes, I know there's a problem. Have a large heart. Accept that we can have weakness. Every son of Adam. Every son of Adam will have his weaknesses. We'll have a share of sin as well. So best is he who's able to rectify his state of affair. Repent and rectify. How do you do that? By being aware. Self-awareness is important. So that, of course, we just deviated away from Shohib's question. Shohib, regarding your question, as I said, description would be more about how do you see yourself? Who do you think you are? For example, if I tell you, um, let's think of uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is a description of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which comes in our mind? as sadiq al amin Can you tell me about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Then the answer would not be as sadiq al amin You will talk about who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, who, what was his achievement. Now you see, subhanAllah, we're just presenting the CV of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man whose life can never be limited to a CV. But we're just giving you uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as an example. Okay? So describe the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you would say, talk about his qualities, that he's a sadiq, he's al amin he's trustworthy. And you might give some examples from his life in Makkah pre before Islam on how the people, the Arabs trusted him. And there were issues which had come up with regards to shifting of the black stone and putting it back. And the Arabs were almost at war before they reached out to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the Arabs trusted him. He was a sadiq, he was al amin they would go with it. All the tribes would believe in uh, the Prophet Sallallahu sense of justice. So one example of Sadiq al Amin, backed with the Prophet Sallallahu life, and you've given an example. Now, what am I trying to say? I'm giving you an example of how to describe a personality. So you need to describe yourself. Okay? Tell me about yourself means tell about yourself. What do you do? What are you into? Okay, you are into playing sports and games. I'm very particular about my health, uh, my mental health. I, I do exercise regularly. These are important things, okay? Because we don't want people to come up at a workplace who do not have good, healthy lifestyle, all right? Th these are equally important as well. All right, Shreve, I hope that answered your question. Um, I can see some of you have sent me a question. All right, there's a direct message, so I'm not going to read it aloud. Let me first read it.
Mm. Okay. Um, I'm going to come to this question, which has been sent to me directly a little later, because I need to spend a little more time on that question. So I'm just making a note of it for the time being. Or we'll get back to that shortly, inshallah. All right, let's quickly get the discussion rolling once again. So we move on to the next slide that we have. We've prepared for the potential interview. Where do you see yourself in five years, by the way? How are you going to address that question? How do you see yourself? Five, where do you see yourself five years from now? Well, I see myself five years from now uh, being the leader of the department where I'm working. And who is the leader? The person who's interviewing you. All right. How are you going to put yourself from that embarrassing position that you are trying to take away someone's position? No. The idea of where do you see yourself in five years is you have to talk about your knowledge, your learning skills. Talk about how you see yourself as a leader, that you will use the current job to acquire skills, working skills. At the same time, you will work on updating and upgrading your skill. Believe you me, my dear students. Upgrading your skill is critical in today's day and age. I don't believe it. How many in the Muslim world do not identify the importance of skill development, upgrading yourself. We think that skill development means something which is easy, available, free, of course, you know, pay a small amount or don't pay anything. Ah, you can do it freely. You'll be surprised to know that in the non-Muslim world, there is so much of trust on skill development and there are people who pay huge amount of money just to upgrade themselves because they see the long-term benefits in that. I remind all of you, my students at the IOU over here, a believer never retires. A human being were not made to retire at the age of 60. Allah did not create us to retire at the age of 60. Retirement happens when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for us to return to him. That's when we retire. So until then, keep upgrading your skill. Do not limit yourself to becoming a worker or a staff or an employee all your life. Keep upgrading your skill. If you know that there is something which you don't have in you, work to have it. Why can't you acquire a skill? The whole world is acquiring skill. The whole world is progressing. Why is it that we have these self-limiting thoughts in our mind? I'm reminding all of you again, please invest in updating and upgrading yourself. If you don't do it today, you'll be missing the bus. There'll be a lot of other people who will invest and move forward. Okay. So now where do you see yourself in five years? Talk about your career goals. Where do you see yourself? What are your career goals and aspiration? You should know where you want to see yourself 15 years from now, 20 years from now. In order to do that, where do you see yourself now? And how do you wish to achieve there by, in five years? Just by changing jobs like many people do today. Today I'm in one job, tomorrow I hop into another job. Hop, 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 hop. Well, only you know which animal hops. All right. I mean, I'm not going to com compare human beings to animals, but I'm saying it's not the right approach in, in, in a working professional environment just to keep skipping and jumping jobs just for a higher salary. That's not a growth. Real growth is not money. Can you please mute yourself, whoever is unmuted? Thank you. All right. So the real job... Hmm, Who's this? Shoaib, can you please unmute? Can you please mute yourself? Thank you. So where do you see yourself in five years? You talk about all of these, inshallah ta'ala, how you wish to progress, how you wish to acquire skills, and so on and so forth. All right. Moving on. Review your resume. Review your CV. When was the last time you reviewed your CV or your resume? Talk about your CV, your resume. Check for the spellings and grammar mistakes before you send your CV. It should not be that you apologizing to your employer at the time of the interview. My mistake, I'm extremely sorry, sir, the spelling was wrong. That shows that you were not careful and your intent was not very strong when you applied for the job. You just applied for the sake of it. For, you know, let's apply. If you get a call, we get a call. If you don't get a call, big deal. And when you got a call and now you're in a difficult position, you have to explain yourself. Why is your CV full of spelling and grammar mistakes? We've done a workshop on how to write your CV and your resume. So you can check out those recordings in, inshallah. I think it should be available on YouTube. 
Um, you can get in touch with me. I'm going to help you find out the YouTube links if you haven't gone through it already. With that being said, your CV, your resume must be reviewed before you send it out. So if you know someone who's good with English, please get in touch with them in your family, you know, in and around your circle. Sit with them with your CV, your physical CV, and tell them, I need one hour of your time. Please help me out with my CV. Take the time. If, if they are busy people, tell them, I'm going to pay you some amount of money. You know, pay them some money because you're going to use your CV to earn money in the future. This is going to help you earn money. So there's no harm in investing a small amount of money, you know, a few dollars here and there, $5, $10, etc. for a one hour time. Please review my CV. If that person is also encouraged and motivated because he or she is getting some money for the time that he or she is spending and you get your CV rectified as well. Okay. In your CV, elaborate on uh, certain accomplishments, all right? So uh, when I say certain accomplishments, it means you don't have to list on all the accomplishments. Don't make your resume too long. Important accomplishments, which will help identify your skills and your strength clearly, identify those, okay? And when you're talking about it, stick to specific examples only. Remember, you have to understand that the interviewer has to interview other people as well. And he and she has kept a limited time for you. If you end up talking too much about just your CV, he or she does not get to know about you beyond your CV. All right. So when you have to walk them through your resume, you need to keep a certain time in mind. Quickly run them through your CV. Remember, the CV is there for them to know more about you. So just key, touch on key aspects of your CV. There are certain accomplishments which you want to draw their attention to. Talk only about them. For details, they have the CV with them. They can always review and read through your CV, inshallah. Okay. Now we're getting into the soft skills aspect of a job when you're applying for a job. Maintaining of discipline is extremely important. So when you are called for an interview, you must attend it on time. Time discipline is important. You have an interview which is set up and you don't turn up for your interview on time. This shows lack of prepared, preparedness for the interview and also shows that you are not a person who can be trusted in the long run with the organization. The organization really is not interested in someone who turns up last minute for the interview. It means that if your job is given to you, everything will happen in the last moment. Show your intent by reaching 10 to 15 minutes or at least 15 minutes in advance if not more. Perhaps you can reach the local, locality how, one hour in advance or 45 minutes in advance and sit in a cafe and sip through a cup of coffee while you, you know, do a bit of breathing exercises as you prepare yourself to walk into the company's building for an interview. Okay, so plan well in advance. If you have to travel a long distance, it doesn't make sense to just take off and uh, one hour is left for the interview and you start one and a half hours before and you get stuck in the traffic and you miss out your interview or you're late for the interview. So I got stuck, oh, the, uh, the tire went flat. Remember on the day of your interview, anything can happen with you. The tires can go flat, the floods can hit you, you hit your city, anything can happen. So prepare well in advance in terms of your time, make sure that you reach on time and you're prepared for the interview. Show your intent through these. If you're desperate, show your desperation by maintaining punctuality. That's the best way to show your intent. All right, let's move on. Be attentive during the interview. Your interviewer is going to ask you some questions. He may even give out some instructions before the interview. Avoid any distraction. Hear the person talking to you clearly, carefully. What about the mobile phone etiquettes? What should be by mobile phone etiquettes? The mobile phone must be kept on silent mode. Best is to switch it off. The last thing you want is the mobile phone vibrating in your pocket. Avoid that. Keep your mobile phone on silent mode or put it off. All right. So that you're not distracted by your mobile phone. Make sure that you're dressed for the interview. You're wearing the right outfit for the interview. You have your blazers on. You have your tie on or the women have their proper hijab on, okay? Neat and clean outfit is being worn. If you are a person who tends to sweat a lot, and it happens with some of us, we do tend to sweat a lot. If that's the case with you, 
what is the backup that you have for it? All right, the backup is that you reach on time so that you allow your body to cool down. Use proper deer sprays so that you smell good. On the day, when I say smell good, it means not putting loud perfumes. All right, if you put loud perfume, that's a no no for interviews. Workplaces, you're not supposed to put loud in perfumes. When I say smell good, it means you should not smell bad, which means you put mild deos, which will cut the bad odor caused due to sweating and walking under the heat and turning up for an interview. Okay. All right. Be attentive during the interview is what we were talking of. Now I come to my favorite bit, communication skills. Do you have the right communication skills? Speak clearly in your interviews. Be calm. There's no rush. You might be nervous. Because of our nervousness, we tend to speak a little fast. Relax. Calm yourself down. If a question is asked, don't behave or don't show that you're nervous and you're trying to make yourself calm. For example, some people tend to uh, respond by taking a deep breath in front of the interviewer. So if a question is asked, yes, sir, I'm going to answer that. Or avoid all these stunt in front of the interviewer. All these should have happened outside the room. Once you've walked in, maintain calm. Calm disposition. Communicate slowly and clearly. There is no rush. Yes, your interview is time bound, but you don't want to rush and show that you're a person who's impatient. Rather, you speak clearly and speak calmly so that you're able to communicate what you wish to share with them. Avoid mumbling. And if you don't know an answer, tell them honestly, sir, I don't have a, uh, well, sir, I am not aware about it. If a question is asked, tell them I am not aware about it. You don't have to go round and round and round. Remember, these are industry experts, subject matter experts interviewing you. What will they understand about you when you just try to bluff them? They'll understand. Positive body language is very important. How do you sit? I'm ready for the interview. Yes, sir. Okay, so some people would sit like this. Yes, sir. Or you just bend down. Or you slouch back. Or you're fidgety. You keep moving. All right. So you're going on moving. That's not how you do your interviews. If a person sees you, you're fidgety. Oh, you're too late back. Yes, sir. Tell me. That's not how you sit. Sit smartly. Sit respectfully. Put your hands on the table. Like your hands on the table in front of you. If you don't have a table, put both your hands on your lap. All right. On your thighs, not your lap. Sorry. On your thighs. Just around your knee. You know, like we sit for the tashahut. Sit like that, all right? Put your hands on your leg, uh, thighs and your knee around that point and keep your hands or, or your body language calm, all right? Avoid being fidgety, holding a pen or something in the hand and moving your fingers like this. Rather, when you're communicating, you can use both your hands to express yourself because body language is important. So you can use your hands to express yourself, but avoid going overboard with your expression. You should not appear as a person who's too dominating. Maintain a calm body language disposition when you're talking, all right? Avoid slouching in the seat. Avoid being too laid back. Avoid being fidgety. Maintain eye contact. In this session that I'm having right now, I have been continuously trying to look into the lens of my camera. Why? Because I know people who are watching this and watching the video would be looking into the lens or would be looking into, at the video as well as the slide. So when you look at the video now, it appears as though I'm looking into your eyes directly. So I'm maintaining an eye contact. When you're talking to a person, maintain eye contact with the interviewer. Remember, the question may have been asked by one person but there might be three people sitting in the room. So you need to talk to all of them, maintain eye contact with all of them. But the one who asked you the question, look at them for a little longest time, all right? So I give you a half a second extra time, all right? But I look into the eyes of all who are there, all right? Tell me about yourself. 
okay, uh, you know, uh, I have started my own business. It's called the Abira Consulting in UAE. We are a business into, we are into the business of capacity development. We work towards upskilling the youth because we believe that the modern day uh, academic knowledge is not sufficient for someone to get the job. So what I'm doing is while I'm talking, I'm looking into the eyes and right now I'm not looking into the lens, but I'm assuming there are three people sitting in front of me and I'm running my eyes from left to right, looking at all of them, maintaining eye contact with them. I don't look down and talk. I don't look here and talk. Uh, well, I would like to tell you about myself five years from now. I see myself starting my own business. That's not how you answer your question, all right? Look into their eyes and talk. People who are honest, sincere, truthful, they look into the eyes and talk. They have nothing to hide, all right? Body language says if you have nothing to hide, you look into the eyes of the person and talk, all right? You don't start daydreaming, all right? Okay, avoid using slang jargons or casual jargons. Okay, now it may happen that the interviewer is getting a little comfortable with you and being casual, you avoid being casual, all right? Be very careful and alert about it because what happens is the moment we get a little casual, we tend to move out of the interview mode. Remember, you're in an interview. He is entitled to do whatever he wants. He is entitled to do whatever he wishes. I have to maintain my professionalism when I'm being interviewed. Okay, avoid giving any political view. If they ask you any political view also, you can tell them that I am probably uh, not the right person for this because I've not really had much time to follow the news, etc. You don't want to get into sharing your political thoughts and ideas because these are very sensitive issues where people get divided and people actually get into major arguments and debates. And so you wouldn't want to be seen as a person who's probably opposing uh, one or two of the interviewers who are sitting there in terms of political ideology. All right. So avoid getting into political statements, religious statements, race related statements. You're not here to promote any political parties or religion or race. You're here to do your job. All right. So try to focus on those statements as well. Don't get carried away. If they make some statements. All right. Just listen to them. OK, but avoid getting yourself into that uh, entangled into all of that. And that's why I said. Your social media profile is extremely important. How you clean your social media profile is will give them an impression. They will certainly check your social media profile. And in today's day and age, by not maintaining a social media profile, you're missing out on an opportunity as well. There are great opportunities on LinkedIn and Twitter, as I mentioned to you. You should make use of it. The interview mode is on. You have to practice being polite and professional. And as Muslims, we have to work on being polite and professional uh, in most cases. As soon as you enter the building, the security who welcomes you or opens the door for him, smile and say, thank you so much. All right, smile. When you greet the receptionist, you meet the receptionist, hello, uh, so-and-so, or assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, ma'am, or good morning, ma'am, or whoever the person is, male, female, whoever it is, ma'am, sir, whatever it is, smile and greet them, all right? So I've come here for an interview today. There's an interview being held for a certain role. Uh, could you tell me where I need to go? That's it. All right. When you walk into the interview room, give a warm welcome to or, or, or a warm wish to everybody. Good morning. Uh, 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 what you call bo board members, for example, if there are board members who are there. Uh, good morning, the uh, panel members. All right. So you just say you don't have to say good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Avoid that. If you know there are more than uh, two, three people there, just say panel members. Good morning to all of you panel members. Or if you know it's a Muslim organization, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's enough, sufficient. All right. Or good morning panel members. That's it. Welcome them with a smile. They want to see whether you have a smiling disposition. You see, this is a sunnah. Smiling is a charity. All right. And uh, a smiling face tends to show you in a positive light as well. Remember, the first impression is the last impression. Maintain your best behavior. Be humble. Remember the cameras in the building watches you. So how you're being treated or how you're treating people with whom you're coming in contact till you walk into the interview room, you're being monitored, you're being seen, all right?
couple of more points which I want to share. One is customizing your answers. Don't give general answers all the time. So if they're asking you a question, remember, eventually you're being interviewed, not for the company, but for a job. So all your answers somehow have to get linked to the role for which you're applying. You have to eventually showcase your skills. Remember, that three minute or five minute or 10 minute of interview is your chance to show why you should be given that job. So make most of that and try to, you know, move around and maneuver around to showcase your skills. That is what your objective should be. And when I talk about your skills, be assertive about your skills. If you have certain skills and strength, speak out about it confidently and give some information to showcase how you use that skill in a particular situation. Like I said, a previous job, certain project was given to you. How did you manage the project? Talk about the challenges the project had and how you were able to overcome those challenges. Don't be arrogant. Don't overgo or, or, or don't go overboard, I beg your pardon. Don't be too boastful about your strengths. You talk about your strengths. Yes, we have all been given certain strengths. Allah has blessed us with strengths as well as weaknesses. We spoke about it. When you talk about your strengths, don't sound arrogant or boastful. All right. Show yourself as a team player. Today, companies want to hire leaders and leaders are not those who do all the work by themselves. This was given to me. No one did it. I did it. This job was given. I was the first one to complete it. It's not about I. Companies today don't want people who are all about I, me, myself. No. You have to talk about yourself being a team player, how you're helping other team members as well. You may have completed the job. Others may not have completed. How you helped others as well because the organization does not succeed when you succeed. Organization succeeds when the team is successful. So remember, you have to show yourself as a team player. You discussed this about career goal. Define your career goal. You should be having a clarity about this in your mind. Avoid being specific and being vague. If they ask you a question, uh, do not show that you lack ambition. You have no ideas about your career goal. Now, for your career goal, you need to know, ask yourself, what do you wish to do five years from now, 10 years from now? If you wish to start a business of your own, quite honestly, we can't start a business till we have a knowledge about what are the kind of jobs needed to do to start the business? So many people take up jobs to gain experience about how to handle things. So now when I am asked about my career goal, five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, I should be able to define very clearly what I wish to do and be clear about it. Don't feel shy about it. Don't show that you are shy about succeeding in life. Why should you be shy about succeeding in life? So. Show how you plan to achieve your career goal. So when they ask you to define your career goal, show them how do you plan to achieve your career goal. That this particular job is going to assist me in learning the following skills. I already have these skills. In addition to this, I'll be able to acquire more skills. I'm a person who believes in continuous development. I also take up a lot of courses to develop my skills, which is, by the way, there in your CV as well. You might have some certificates that you have got for completing certain short skills. So all of that are now adding up. And the interview can, interviewer can see that you are very clear about your career goals and aspirations. All right. Talk about all of this. Study the interviewer's style as well. I mentioned this, that when the interviewer starts asking questions, see the body language, maintain professional behavior, follow his style and approach. Show that if he puts you in a difficult situation, you don't get worried. You adapt to the environment that he's giving you. That shows, remember the interviewer's job is to make you uncomfortable. He wants to take, see, you get 10 minutes to impress, and he gets 10 minutes to decide whether you can generate revenue for him or not. So it's equally difficult for the interviewer, not just for you. So the interviewer will try to put you in a difficult situation and see how you react to it. Adapt well to the given environment. Maintain your calm. You know, nothing best, better than maintaining a calm disposition. You will be asked by many interviewers, do you have any questions? Now, if you have any questions, do not hesitate asking about any of your concerns. But don't jump the queue. Don't start asking questions about things related to the job when you haven't been hired. 
ask relevant questions so that you understand the job role clearly. That is allowed. So identify your questions, identify your questions well in advance. So before you sit for the interview, you might have a couple of questions in your mind. Ask relevant questions. Random questions can be dealt with in later. Okay. So avoid all of this, inshallah ta'ala. Last bit which I want to share with you is to stay positive and motivated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not despair. Do not lose hope. In the Allah ma'ana. Allah is with us. And Allah is certainly with us. And he's always with us. And we should not lose hope. The risk is provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a razzaq. He's created a situation to send me for an interview to prepare me. I may not get this job, but I gain an experience. Never undermine an interview. Never undermine a failure. A failure never means a failure. We call words like failure in our, in our vocabulary, which appears negative. Believe you me, you study the life of the greatest of business achievers. They all failed. They all suffered. They all struggled. You look into the life of the prophets of God. How many of the prophets were rejected by the people? And yet, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, showed us, shows us through the life of these prophets that how they remain determined, how they remain positive, how they remain motivated. Our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faced so much of problems in ta'if. To a point that the angels of mountains came down and said that give us the instruction and we'll crush the people over here. And the Prophet ﷺ stayed positive. He was self-motivated. He stayed positive about the people of Taif. The point is, do not lose hope. Do not lose hope with an interview which goes wrong. Reply honestly. Be honest. Be sincere. That is a mark of a believer that he is honest. Be enthusiastic. Enthusiasm doesn't mean, you know, jumping. Enthusiasm means uh, looking forward to it. Maintain a positive attitude. Do not show your nervousness. We are all nervous. You think I wasn't nervous before this session was conducted? I was nervous. Everyone is nervous. Allah has created us this way. And you know what nervousness does? Nervousness helps us push ourselves to a higher level. Your nervousness should not push you down. It should push you up to perform better. You see these great sports personalities when they perform so well. Do you think they're not nervous? Of course they are nervous. But they don't appear sad. They don't appear disappointed. Failure, what is called failure, only means that you have to now, or you have learned a new way, a new way to tackle things in your life. You've gained experiences in your life. All right. So I'm going to be taking your questions right now. But before I take the questions, I have already made this request earlier. And again, I will remind you to set up a proper social media profile of yours, specifically on Twitter and LinkedIn. I mean, Insta and Facebook is so personal that uh, many of us uh, waste our time on them. But Twitter and LinkedIn is an important learning profile. Maintain a healthy Twitter and LinkedIn profile, inshallah ta'ala. And follow me on Twitter and in LinkedIn as well as Facebook and Instagram, I have a public profile. So you can check out my page as well. Thank you so much for attending the session. Now we're going to open up the forums for questions. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Use the raise hand button. And I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Or if you want to type and send in your question, you still will have to raise your hand. Okay, Raise your hand and keep your question ready. As soon as I call out your name, you can share it in the chat box. Okay. All right. Praising that the YouTube video and writing a resume can be. Okay, one minute. Before I move forward, I want to quickly see what are the questions which came here in the chat box. What is the best way to explain your Islamic responsibilities? That is social gatherings, prayers, etc. Um, I really don't know what you mean, Abdul. But if you wish to clarify, I would request you to unmute yourself by raising first raise your hand and then you can clarify what you want to say. Um, sometimes the positions and the hiring skills are not explained well. How to post the resume account according to that? When are we not sure what they're needing it? What if a person has some qualities, but not all of them? Should one apply or not? Look. There is something called job knowledge and desired skills. You should know whether you have the job knowledge or not. Okay. 
when you say some skills we have and some skills you don't have, working skills you need to have. If there are technical jobs, like for example, IT related job, and you have communication skills, you have negotiation skills, but you don't have technical skills, you're not hired. So again, uh, it's not about having all the skills. They are always called desired skills. Desired means highly desirable. Some skills or can be picked up during the job, all right? But if they are technical skills, there is no two ways about it. You need to have the technical skills. If you don't have it, you're not selected. Okay, uh, the link on how to write a CV, et cetera, you please send me an email or connect with me on social media. As I said, I'm gonna share it separately. I mean, I can't take time out right now searching for the link, so I can't uh, do it right now. Please avoid sending questions in the chat box. I'm not gonna take any more questions. Khalas, I'm gonna call out your names because I can see everyone is now setting up, sending questions in the chat box and I'm not gonna allow that. I prefer interaction. You people are talking about interview sessions. Are you going to be sending chat box questions to your interviewer? So please have the courage to come up and ask questions. I like people who ask questions directly. Okay, so Sonel, please go ahead. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, Sonel. Please go ahead with your question. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, the pronunciation is Sonile. Sonil. Okay, please go ahead, Sonil. Okay, I have a question on remuneration. There are times when an interviewer would ask uh, what your financial goals are in regards to remuneration. How would you go about to answer such a question when you're asked what your uh, remuneration expectation is? Very good question, uh, Sonel. I'm going to come back to your question. I'm just making a note of it right now. I'll just quickly take two more questions. What about remuneration and how to handle that question? Uh, yes, uh, sorry, Sueba. Sueba, please go ahead with your question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you for Thank this you. session. Um, at, in the last interview I attended, although I got the job, I was asked my weaknesses. After the strength, I was also asked what are your weaknesses. I was a bit um, not comfortable, but I just expressed myself that I sometimes I become emotional on issues when conf I am confronted, but I am working on it because I was giving feedback on that by my line manager. So it's like, just told the truth. Sometimes I can be emotional over issues, um, especially when there's uh, low performance, then um, I'm working on it. Well, I got the job, but I don't know, is this the right thing to ask? How will, okay. uh, should I really come about this when I'm asked? All right. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Good question again. I'll come back to you as well. I've made a note of it. Thank you. Uh, Sahar Qurayshi, yes, please go ahead. I was just asking, uh, perhaps you did not understand my question. I'm sure you did, but uh, see, maybe I did not explain it well. Like, for example, uh, I saw a job, uh, we are hiring kind of thing. It was a social media thing, you know. Uh, they asked for two things, like I'm really good at social media. I'm very active. I can post and I can do all of that thing. But they were asking if I can make videos or maybe I, I can make posters, which I can't. So if I know half of the thing, then I can't, you know, sh should I apply for it? Or should I not apply for it? That's what I was asking. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We'll quickly answer these questions and then we'll take more questions, inshallah. Uh, others can just wait for the turn. I'll call out your name shortly. All right. The first question was about remuneration. Now, this is, again, a very common question. They'll ask you, what is your expectation from this job? Financial expectation. Do you have a salary expectation? Now, it's extremely important that you do a thorough review about all of this before you sit for an interview. Now, do you understand how important an interview is? That in an interview of 10 minutes, you need to probably put in five hours of preparation. You need to actually research and find out what is the average payout for this job in the market, in the industry. So you find out what the industry payout is. You find out what the company is paying out on an average. How do you do that? There are a lot of ways to do it. All right? You need to check up online. You need to find out. You need to probably see if you can connect with some people uh, in that field, in that sector. Because what I'm assuming is if you're applying in a particular industry or in a particular 
type of a job role, you might know other people in that kind of a field as well. So you might want to talk to four, five, seven people and understand what is an ideal market rate for this kind of a job. All right. Now, when you've identified the industry payouts, you find out what is the company payout to the best of your ability. If you are not able to get an exact amount, you are always able to get a, an average range that is being paid. Now you compare to what you are being paid over here, where in your previous company, and you be very clear about what your expectations are. You can tell them that, well, my expectation is uh, I would like to go with the industry standards, which are there. The industry standards for this job, as per my research tells me, it is, uh, let's say, $2,000 per month for this job, two to $3,000 per month. And uh, that's the kind of range that I'm looking at. I'm currently drawing a salary of $1,500. And I see this as a, a appropriate growth for me that I be paid around 20, 25% over this because I'm bringing into this job certain unique skills, all right? So when you are mentioning about your remuneration, make sure that you club your skills why you should be paid that extra amount. You are not only asking for the remuneration, but you are mentioning them the reason why you're asking for that remuneration. You tell them that I'm bringing into this job X, Y, Z skills. If I'm given this job, I'll be making the company achieve far more than what the company will be paying me. You know, you have to know your self-worth and ask according to your self-worth, all right? They might tell you that, well, what you're saying is wrong. Remember the rule, the boss is always right. All right, at least at the time of the interview, the boss is always right. Uh, rule number one. Rule number two, if the boss is wrong, refer to rule number one. Remember these two golden rules in life. The boss is always right, rule number one. Rule number two, if the boss is wrong, refer to rule number one, that the boss is always right. So the point here is that if you face a situation like this, if they are trying to tell you that, no, that's wrong, the industry standard is not like this, well, acknowledge that it may be that I have had an oversight in understanding the industry standard. I'm willing to correct myself. Uh, but with that being said, uh, as I told you, that my, my estimation of what I should get for this job is based on the skills and knowledge that I'm bringing into the job role and my ability to utilize my skills to effectively do the job and that my time management skills are there and so on and so forth, okay? So you back it with that. And I hope that answers your question, Sunil. So Eba wanted to know, uh, what about your weaknesses? If somebody asks me about my weaknesses, and if I mention that I'm a very emotional person, uh, do you think, though I got the job, but was that the right approach? To be honest, look, when you're talking about your weakness, you have to understand that some weaknesses are human tendency and nature. Don't say that I have no weakness. I mean, you can never say, no one can say that they don't have any weakness. Awareness is important. And you to start off by saying that uh, I am aware of some uh, one of my weakness, which is I'm emotional in nature. With that being said, I have been working on overcoming aspects relating to my emotions. And in fact, I can tell you that there are uh, courses and workshops and sessions which I have attended, some of which is mentioned in my CV and resume. And I can tell you that they have helped me remarkably in overcoming some of my weaknesses. Having said that, uh, I am not perfect. I have my shortcomings and I'm aware of my shortcomings and I keep working on improving on my shortcomings. I identify them and I try to uh, find appropriate sessions and counseling and workshops which can help me become a more complete person. Say something like this, inshallah ta'ala. And by the way, as I told you, we all have to keep upgrading ourselves and plugging the vacuum which we have if you have a vacuum somewhere you need to find a way to plug that in or cover that up by doing necessary skill workshops Seher, if you're not sure about a particular job role clearly or the skills are not clear to you because they have not identified clearly or they mentioned that about some skills but you have some of them but the other skills you're not too sure firstly if you're not clear about it See if there is a contact number given or contact email address given. Write to them that I'm interested to apply for this job. I have come across this job role. Refer to this Fulan, Fulan, Fulan ad. The job skills that you have mentioned, or there are no job skills mentioned there. Would you be kind enough to share with me what is your expected job skills or desired job skills so I may accordingly apply or not apply? Write back to them. 
All right, so they'll probably get back to you and share with you the details. Now, that's one aspect of your question. The second aspect is, uh, what if uh, the, what was it? I'm not sure. Uh, if I have some skills and I don't have some skills, should I apply or not? Uh, like uh, social media posting, you said. In a situation like this, Sahar, what you have to do is uh, you have to go with your gut feeling. If you are not able to get through to the employer and you're not getting clarity, apply for the job and go with the motions, inshallah ta'ala. If you are shortlisted, great, alhamdulillah. If you're not shortlisted, anyways, you're not shortlisted. But if you are in the interview rounds, you can uh, try to handle yourself in the interview situation, all right? If they, there is clarity provided during the interview, it's good for you, all right? So that is my advice to you, Sahar Qureshi. I hope that answers your question. The next question is from Ali Hassan Ardo. Please go ahead. Yes, Ali. Assalamu wa rahmatullah. Assalamu wa rahmatullah. First of all, I want to thank you very much for this interesting lecture. I hope we will continue to have this kind of session to encourage us and inspire us to uh, do more. Secondly, my question is uh, based on our religious uh, background and uh, sometimes cultural uh, background. When we are asked to speak about ourselves, sometimes we feel shy. So in the terms of seeking a job, can we now uh, be able to express ourselves or what do we do in that kind of situation? Because uh, sometimes in terms of religion, it will look like as if you are boastful when you are talking about yourself, especially when you are talking about some achievement you have been able to make. Ali, can so, you give me an example and go with an example? Let's go with an example so it will be more clear to all of us. Like example now, uh, in my own aspect, uh, when I'm asked to speak about myself mm -hmm. and I have some outstanding achievement I have been able to achieve, I feel shy to speak about this achievement. Like uh, there's a project I was able to go between the, uh, the government of Nigeria and uh, the community and the project was able to materialize and uh, it was commissioned. So I feel when speaking is as if I have been boastful or something like that, these are some of the things I feel uh, very shy to speak about when it comes to speaking about myself. Okay. I have taken that note of your question, inshallah. Uh, I'll take the next question and I'm going to come back to you, inshallah. Uh, Ak uh, Akrima Azhara, if I got your name correctly, please go ahead with your question. Um, okay, assalamu alaikum. Uh, so just now you talk about avoid talking about uh, political or religious uh, religious ideology, but sometimes uh, there are some situations and some cases where the interviewers still talk about. Uh, religious ideologies, for example, uh, because, uh, for example, I'm wearing niqab, and so you know they keep ask they keep asking me about my religious ideologies, which I think um, doesn't really, you know, relevant with uh, the position that that I'm going to take, and it 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 doesn't only happen in um, job interview, but also in scholarship interview. So how can we handle with this type of situation in a professional way? Thank you. Barakallah fikum. Wafiki barakallah. Thank you so much. I'll come back to your question as well. All right. Uh, sure, please go ahead with your question. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Um, uh, my, my question has to do with uh, maybe uh, in answering uh, questions during the interview, maybe the interviewer asks a particular question and uh, you've answered to the best of your knowledge, knowing very well that what you said uh, was the right answer and they are challenging you that uh, your answer was uh, not right. Uh, do you have the right to challenge them 
example, that there was a time I had attended an interview and they asked of uh, they asked me of uh, what's the psychology. So I spoke about like the study of the mind or the knowledge of the mind, or, and they were like, no, is is it the study of the the brain or the mind? And I said the mind, and they were like, no, it's the brain, not the mind. So I don't know, it was it the right way okay. to challenge, or you just have to admit like that, and then sure. But the fact that you are looking for the job. Sure, sure. Good question. Good question, sure. Let's answer these questions, inshallah, and then we will proceed with other questions. Let's take the question of Ali. How do we express our outstanding achievement because of, you know, Islam also talks about being humble and humility is there. And Ali says, I'm shy. Let me give you a couple of examples from the Quran as well, and perhaps things will become very clear to us from the lives of two of our prophets, Isa alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam, when he was an infant, the first miracle of his recorded in the Quran, apart from his miraculous birth, but the first miracle that Isa alayhi salam did. Can anyone tell me what was the first ever miracle as per the Quran? Can anyone quickly tell me? Just put it in the chat box. What was the first ever miracle Ibrahim Isa alayhi salam did? Anyone? Yes, Armani has said, he spoke. He spoke as an infant. Uh, he said, most certainly I'm the slave of Allah. Now, Ali, the point I'm trying to raise is when, uh, when Isa alayhi salam as an infant was saying, I am the slave of Allah. He was describing himself as a servant of Allah. Do we think that Isa alayhi salam was being boastful? We say, no, he was not being boastful, but rather he knew what he was because it was backed by, you know, the fact that Isa alayhi salam would go on to become, uh, uh, was an abid. So uh, Isa alayhi salam is speaking as an infant. Another example, Ibrahim alayhi salam says, um, uh, and it's recorded, I, I don't re remember the exact verse, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he spoke to his father, he said, oh, my father, knowledge has come to me. When he's trying to do da'wah to his father, he's saying, oh, my father, knowledge has come to me. Was he being boastful? He was not being boastful. He was trying to present an argument that, look, why am I the right person that you should listen to? Likewise, Isa is saying, don't point finger at my mother. I am telling you of my own that I am the slave of Allah. I'm not what you are telling me because they were uh, insinuating that Isa alayhi salam, how was he born? You know, they couldn't believe the miracle, the people, the Jews at that time. So Isa alayhi salam is defending his mother and at the same time presenting his candidature as the slave of Allah. Likewise, Ibrahim alayhi salam is presenting his candidature that look, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me knowledge. Knowledge has come to me, so I'm talking to you. So the point that we are trying to make over here, Ali, is the fact that uh, if you have achievements and you are trying to take up a position and you have to show that you stand for that position, you talk about your knowledge. You talk about why you are suitable for that. That's what we are trying to do. We are just presenting an argument to show why we are suitable. But see how Ibrahim is saying, he's saying, Oh, my father, knowledge has come to me. Okay? He is speaking with love, with muhabba to his father. His concern is there. Like, so that shows humility. As you talk about it, you show your humility as well. And there's nothing wrong in that. But yes, as you rightly said, there's a thin line. It can sound boastful as well. But inshallah ta'ala, you have to remember the examples I gave you. And there are plenty of examples. Yusuf alayhi salam as well is there uh, talking about it. So inshallah, uh, we can uh, talk of more examples. But I hope that has given you a clarity. And inshallah, you'll be more confident to talk about your skills. Um, another good question was about the religious aspects. Uh, subhanallah, it just slipped my mind. Can you please... Uh, Go ahead with your question once more. Uh, my apologies. Just what was the question, Akrama? What was it? Just um, my, mind. my apologies. Um, the interviewers kept asking you about yes, yes, your yes, religious yes. ideals. I got it now. I got it now. Your clothes, 
Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My apologies. All right. So what if the interviewer is interested in my religious views and ideologies? Okay. What is your religious view and ideology? There are two aspects to it. The first aspect is, are you applying to uh, a job which requires you to have or teach aqidah, for example. So, for example, if I am teaching in an Islamic university and if I have to teach aqidah to the people, then my religious ideology has to come out clearly. Some institutions and organizations have a clear policy that they want to hire people of certain ideology only. Now, that is an example you can gather through or that you can gather through their website, etc. So, if there is a particular job which they do require uh something specific to that then you will have to answer accordingly so somebody for example in the islamic university would ask you uh what is your aqidah how do you explain your aqidah so then you have to go ahead and explain to them that my aqidah my way of understanding uh of uh, the creed is the way of the understanding of the salafus salihin and then you try to give a few examples to show clarity about your aqidah this gives a uh, understanding inshallah ta'ala so there is nothing wrong in this kind of an argument however if it's a normal job and yet they're asking my religious views so uh, you can politely tell them uh, that uh, well so i have always considered my religious views to be very personal and i did not find that in the, the job interview skills that were required but if it is one of the requirement you can tell me and i'll be willing to share my religious views if they tell you then that yes we would like to know your religious views then you'll be very frank about what your religious views are so now it depends on what is their question because now religious views can be on so many aspects but if you find that the religious views which they are trying to extract is something which you've never thought of and they are trying to put you into a trap, etc., you tell them they will have not thought about it. All right. What is your view on such and such war taking place? Says, well, sir, I have really no view about it because I have probably not well read about it. So I don't want to take any position on it. Khalas. But if it is religious, like I said, creed, aqidah, salaf, how do you pray? Do you do roughly then? Generally, such questions are not asked. But in case somebody does ask you such questions, you say that, well, my understanding is, uh, in case they say that, yes, we want to know, I'll tell them that as my understanding is, Raful Yadin is a very, uh, is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. One who does it is rewarded. One who doesn't do it is not punished. So I do, uh, this, this is my understanding of Raful Yadin. And uh, I wish to earn as many sawab and blessing as I can. And, you know, you, you've not given a direct answer. At the same time, you've hinted at what exactly you do. So khalas, you know, I mean, this is just an example I'm giving you. Uh, right now, it's all easy to give examples, Akrama, because we are not in an interview mode. But when you are in an interview mode, you will have to just go with your gut feeling, inshallah ta'ala. Well, I hope that has answered your question. If it hasn't, please come back again and we will try to understand your question better. All right. Uh, we'll take one more question was there from, who was it? Shoaib. Shoaib said, how do you disagree? How do you challenge? Is it wrong to disagree or challenge? Look, some disagreements and challenge is where they may have a different understanding and you may have a different understanding. So you don't want to get into a dispute and argument. Now you need to know what they are. All right. So avoid it. You say, okay, sir, maybe perhaps my it was an oversight on my part. But some knowledge, like you said, about psychology, it was related to mind, body, and so on and so forth. I didn't understand the technical aspect. You know your field better. If it is related to your field and you're very clear about it, you tell them that, uh, well, sir, my understanding on this matter was that it is related to the mind and it is not related to the heart. That is what I have studied. And to as far as my memory serves me, it has to do with the mind. If they say, no, it is related to with, uh, with the heart, tell them, sir, I, might I will have to check that and get back. Uh, perhaps I will need to correct myself if I'm wrong. But to the best of my knowledge, uh, my understanding was that it is related to the mind. That's it. Remember, the idea sometimes by the uh, interviewer is not to show that they don't know, but to see whether you are sure about it or not. If they try to put you under pressure, do you give up? So you have to show that you're not giving up. At the same time, you're showing to them that you're willing to review your views and come back. All right. I hope that answers your question. All right, we're going to take some more questions. Armani, please go ahead with your questions. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. My question is like, 
we sometimes, as Muslims, we don't control everything in our lives. And if we are away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and life takes a turn towards guidance, that, that takes time to find the right guidance. And we cannot display that on a resume, like, the, for example, gap years, like for searching for the right path. Or mm -hmm. there may be some family problems, like in Indian joint, joint families. So some situations are really detrimental that impacts your studies. And you know what I'm trying to say, like we have like gap here or you change from your stream. Mm. So, or if you are leading a life of sin and you suffered somehow, like you're doing everything, you're going correctly, you, you're, you're doing what's required of you on your academics. But somehow, if Allah has planned something else for you, things won't work out the way like what you want it to be. So how do we uh, handle those situations if we have a like gap year? Mm, I got your question. We, so how, how can we, you know, display in a tangible way because they don't understand what, what our inner yeah. self suffering. Sure. I, I will try to answer that question, Armani. I'll come back to you, okay. inshallah. Uh, Iman, please go ahead with your question. Iman Tasneem, please go ahead. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum A little louder, Iman, please. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir. Actually, I would like to ask that what kind of a challenge can I face in the job world, in the job environment? What kind of a challenge can I face? Because as a human being, everyone makes mistakes, right? So what kind of a challenge we can face in the job environment sure. so that the employees are aware of like challenges? Sure. All right, Iman, I'll come back to your question, inshallah. Thank you. Yes, Rukhaya, please go ahead with your question. Uh, Rukhaya Ahmad, please go ahead with your question. Uh, Jazakallah khairan for the session, Saad. They've been really helpful. I recently was able to sit for an internship interview, and alhamdulillah, I did well built on this guidance. Uh, my question was more like a contribution, like when you're asked for your religious perspective, sometimes you have organizations that are open to like uh, LGBTQ activities. So sometimes when they see you're a Muslim, to also make it comfortable for us, they normally ask us what are our religious standings so that they're able to know if we can, we are okay in that environment or not. This was also Jazakallah Khairan. Mm. Okay, my question to you, Rukhaya. If somebody asks yes, you this question, how would you answer that? Uh, personally, uh, from all the sessions that we have had, before I sit for any interview, I do my due diligence on an entity. If they have this type of uh, policies where you find entities that they say they're open to age, any age, any uh, gender, LGBTQ, any activism, they can apply. It's good for those people who are old, like, you know, you get interested in this entity, and maybe I'm old, they can accept me, you and I need of a job. But then when you see issues of LGBTQ, of course, we are not comfortable. I would personally not take that. I would be frank and I would say I'm a Muslim and I'm not very comfortable with this. And Alhamdulillah, I'd let it go. Alhamdulillah. Okay. All and, right. Uh, also, I was asked, uh, like when I did my interview, as I was doing my due diligence on the farm, uh, I, Alhamdulillah, I did a lot of research. I was also asked about our policies, our religion, our, like prayer times. It was Ramadan. I was fasting. I was, also, I was asked about this. And Alhamdulillah, they were very inclusive. They understood. And LGBTQ didn't come up. It was just a suggestion because it's something that in LinkedIn I've come across so many times where you'll see LGBTQ is accepted. If you're not comfortable, don't apply this and that. That is all. So Jazakallah khairan for this. Sessions, they've really been helpful. Okay, thank you so much. Barakallahu fiki. All right, we'll take the questions now. Let's answer the questions one by one. Well, we'll start off with Armani's question. What if you have a gap of a year or two years in your CV? And that gap can be for many reasons. For example, many women, they take a break from their work because they want to spend some time with the upbringing of their children. And perhaps they are going through maternity and pregnancy and a child being born. And they want to give two to three years 
till the child starts going to the school and then the kind of challenges that you have today, the kind of lifestyle people are living, the cost of living going up, it's needed for two people to earn money. So she has to come back and start working again. Well, how does she explain the gap? Now, you have to present the gap very clearly by showing that you were using this gap to upgrade your skills. Now, I understand that there is a metamorphosis happening in your life that you were away from the dean. And this one year you invested in trying to come back to your roots, to your fitra. The fitra was pulling you towards it. So you have to talk about that this year you, you had been going undergoing a, uh, a bit of challenge in your personal life, in your professional life, and it was taking a toll on your personal health and your mental health. And therefore you decided uh, to take a year off for yourself because you wanted to regroup your uh, yourself yourself mentally and you decided to take this time out to invest in uh, upgrading your skills uh, your mental skills your coping skills and alhamdulillah I, I i was able to work on my spirituality as well because i felt there was a disconnect that i had uh, and my spirituality improving helped me to connect with god better and overcome some of these mental health challenges that i had now, these are things which you can be very confident and speak confidently about it without feeling shy. Remember, again, as I tell you, your risk comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You speak honestly and truthfully about it. Allah will open up pathways for you. This job may not come to you because it was not good for you. It was not meant for you. Qaddar Allahu ma shafa'al. The decree of Allah is good and it is always good. It may, the bad, which we call bad, is because of our own understanding of it. But we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always does things in our favor. That's as far as your gap in the, because of mental health and other issues and coping strategies and you know metamorphosis coming back to the dean and taking time out is concerned. Women, if they are going through a bringing of the family and children, why did you take such a long break? You have to tell them very positively that my break may have been away from work life, but it certainly was not away from building my skills. By uh, being a mother now, I have been able to understand how to cope and uh, handle and learn new skills on managing myself and managing my kid, which has also taught me certain leadership skills and team management skills, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, there are, I mean, uh, a woman can best explain, you know, the kind of things she learns when you see the metamorphosis that happens in her life before she has a child and after she has a child. She's a changed woman. So that change, you have to talk about it positively. You have to be confident about it. Well, alhamdulillah. So that's as far as the gap is concerned. Uh, Iman asked about the challenges that we face, kind of challenge that we can face in the job world environment. What are the kind of challenges? Well, one of the challenges that you will face, and I think I'm going to club this now with the question of Iman, uh, Rukaya. Rukaya is speaking about a challenge that you can face in the job world, that they might ask you about your views on LGBTQ, etc. Now, if a company is very clear that they want to have people who are comfortable with LGBTQ, uh, etc., then you have to be very clear that you don't apply for such jobs. All right. They tell you clearly you apply only if you're comfortable. Otherwise, you don't apply. Halas, I will not apply. My risk is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not somebody who's practicing LGBTQ. Astaghfirullah. Risk is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your trust should be in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, if you don't trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do you expect the help of Allah to come to you? When uh, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were hiding in the cave and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq was worried that uh, the, 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 the Quraysh will find them hiding uh, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, do not worry, do not lose hope. Allah is with us. Allah's help will come. Trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they were not able to locate the Prophet and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, even though they were very close to finding them and still they couldn't locate them. So this is what you should have. That is the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that is most important. Now, what do you do if uh, a company has an LGBTQ policy? If they ask you, what is your view about LGBTQ? You have to tell them that as far as LGBT, and it's a very difficult question. I'll be very honest. And I'm, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm just trying to put myself in a situation like that. How would I probably answer the question? So I would probably say that um, firstly, I would try to avoid uh, getting into religious discussion. And I would say that, well, uh, 
my religion uh, this this i feel is something which has to do with my religion because my religion has a very uh, clear view on this matter uh, but then that has to do with my religion and my spiritual life and uh, i don't allow that to affect my work life my work life requires me to be professional at my workplace and i'm here to work professionally so my dealings with people will be purely on professional basis and not on the basis of uh, the religious ideology for me it is like working with people who are working with from different communities who come together to work however if they still insist that no you have to come out clear with your lgbtq policy then you have to tell them that well as far as uh, these lgbtq is concerned uh, from a religious aspect this is an absolutely no no for us much like uh, in many religion there is a concept of believing in idols as god and it's a no no for us and while we work with people who from other communities, I have no issues with someone working uh, who has a certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, beliefs and ideologies, uh, as long as his, he does not try to use the workspace to promote his ideology. And uh, I also do not use the workspace to promote any ideology. I'm here to work. As long as we are work promoting the work culture, I have no issues with it. If they tell you that you may get rejected for this, or we are sorry, we can't interview you further because we are very clear on these policies, he said, thank you so much for giving me an opportunity and chance. Halas. That's it. My risk is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have to be very clear on that. Again, is that a right answer? Can there be any other answer? Maybe. We are all human beings. We may react to a situation differently. So I'm ready to hear any different views that may be there. But these were some of my thoughts which I had. So I've shared it with you. Kind of challenges, uh, Iman, some more challenges you can face is relating to your prayers, your prayer times, the issue of hijab, especially for the women, men sporting their beard and so on and so forth. So it's extremely important that we keep striving to become better Muslims, etc. And do not give up our identity. All right, when you apply for a job, you turn up in your hijab, etc. And they'll tell you that, well, our work uh, requires us to wear a certain kind of outfit and your hijab does not fit in. So you tell them very politely that, sir, I was here because I felt that my skills fitted into the job and I could give you uh, the kind of work that you wanted. But if my clothes and my outfit and my religious ideologies are, an, uh, are going to work, be a problem for you or is detrimental for the work, then I would prefer holding on to my religion and you can certainly find someone better than me to do the job. Halas. That's it. You will face this challenge, all right, uh, relating to hijab, relating to beard. And that's why it is welcome that the brother starts sporting the beard. It, you know, what the real challenge happens is when you are not sporting a beard and then suddenly the religious awareness comes in and now you want to sport a beard. With that being said, I can tell you globally, many workplaces are accepting women with hijab as well as men with beard. So that kind of acceptance is there. But in case you do come across some challenges like this, these are a reminder to us that shaitan is an open enemy. Remember, uh, the waswasas of the shaitan does not happen only with believers. It happens with the non-believers as well. So they, sh shaitan will try to uh, rattle you, will rattle your belief make you take uh, short decisions, short term decisions which may hamper your connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you have to hold tight you have to remind yourself that you are eventually working to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah has created us, us not, for nothing except to worship him wama khalaqtul insa wama insa illa liya'budun for the ibadah of Allah. And ibadah is not merely prayers. Ibadah is fulfilling the commands of the Quran and the Sunnah and striving every day, every moment of our life to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all trying to do that. We are all at different levels. Somebody is coming closer to Allah at a fast pace. Somebody is coming at a slow pace. Somebody is way ahead. Somebody is way back. But all are striving to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as believers, the kalima, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah should keep us together united and Allah knows best uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide us inshallah we have to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I remind that again challenges will be a lot and that is why I teach a subject called business studies in uh, Islamic online university or international open university where I stress on building in entrepreneurial skills you need to start your own businesses you need to start your own concerns your own firms you can't remain dependent upon going out and working. 
all of you have to see the Khadijas in you. We need to have the Khadijas of today. We need to have the Abdul Rahman ibn Awfs of today and Uthman ibn Affans of today. We have to come out and do businesses. Unless we do that, how will we be able to protect our Iman and our Aqidah and our Deen? Because once you are moving out and trying to look for jobs, etc., you will face these challenges. So work, inshallah, to gain experience. Once you have the experience, Take the decision to start something of your own. Do not worry about failure. Forget what people will say. People will say so many things. They'll try to say, oh, Abdul failed, Abu Bakr failed, Akrema failed, ah, she's always failing. Why is she trying all that? Let them say what they want to say. You are working to do something for yourself. You're seeking the risk Allah has written for you. It's between you and your Rabb. It's not between you and your people. Khalas. Forget the people. The people are not going to come to you when you fail, but they will rush to you when you succeed. All right? So don't bother about people. Work towards building skills and becoming job creators. If you people can become job creators, inshallah ta'ala, you don't have to depend upon policies of workplaces, etc. You will set your own workplace policy. All right? This is what you should all strive to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may he guide all of us. Thank you so much for attending all the sessions. Now I will quickly run through the chat box. I won't take any new questions. Um, some of you people are messaging and asking me some things. What is it? Let's quickly run through. What have I missed out? Okay. Mm, yes, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. You can connect with me on Twitter. I've told all of you to do that, inshallah ta'ala. And... Um, there are no questions. Yes, there was one question which I will inshallah take up. Let me just quickly open that. Where is that question? There was a question which I had noted. Yep, 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 yep. I got it. Okay, Salam Alaikum. I am from Switzerland. Please excuse my direct message. May, may I ask you a situation I faced two months ago? I studied in Austria and Latvia. I was raised in Germany as a migrant kid from Turkey. So, okay, I get it. So, you're from, so you are Turkish, if I'm not mistaken, right? Migrant kid from Turkey. Now, I want to move back to Turkey. Two companies couldn't believe that I am really interested in Turkey. Hence, I have to work in Switzerland. My relocation is just to get emotionally, my parents, etc. How can I explain this professionally? All right. Now, you, thank you so much. That's a good question. It took me a while to understand that question, but I've understood it right now. Barakallahu fiki. Um, I think you also shared something else if I missed out. But anyway, I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to go ahead and answer your more important question. All right. So regarding this point that you have mentioned, first and foremost, uh, the questioner wants to say that he, she is working in place X, but she originally belongs to Turkey and now she wants to go back from where she is working. And she's trying to take a shift. All right. She wants to take a shift maybe within the company. The company has another office, etc. in Turkey, etc. So they're trying to shift within the companies from Switzerland to Turkey. And the company is not able to understand. You have to be very clear that you have parents you have responsibilities towards them. As much as you are working and you have a work responsibility, you have a responsibility to look after your parents as well. And I feel that uh, my work-life balance requires me to spend time with my family, which I'm not able to do when I'm over here. And therefore, I'm looking forward for an opportunity in Turkey and I wish to go back to Turkey. If you can assist me in finding a job or getting a transfer back to Turkey, I would really appreciate it. As much as I have been really, uh, really benefited working in your company or working in Switzerland, uh, and I would love to work over here, but right now my parents also need me. And therefore, I need to be with my parents and uh, that is the reason why I want to go back. Be fair, frank about it. You know, you're not doing anything wrong. In fact, it is your right, your duty to look after your parents, if they, especially if they are aging and so on and so forth. So you should not feel uh, ap uh, awkward about it. You should speak about it frankly. If the company is not willing to offer you a transfer, 
you look out for other companies which can offer you a job in Turkey. So try to reach out to them and tell them if they ask you why you want to relocate from Switzerland to Turkey, you've got a good job in Switzerland. Who wants to come from Switzerland to Turkey? Uh, so tell them that, well, my parents, they are more important to me. They are the ones who have made me what I am today. If I am generating revenue for company X, it is because of the efforts that my parents put in. And today when they need me, I have to be with them. You have to fulfill their rights. So you have to be positive about it, inshallah ta'ala. There is nothing that you should worry about, inshallah ta'ala. All right. So thank you so much. Uh, all right. Iman wants to know when will the session end? Iman, for you, we are ending the session right now. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, all of you, for attending the session. Barakallahu feekum. It was a pleasure talking to all of you. I hope these sessions have been helpful and beneficial. Corporate Connect is to help you get confidence and become industry ready. We would appreciate that you visit the International Open University's Facebook page. There is a review option over there where you can give rating to the IOU. I would love you to go ahead and give a five rating to the IOU and talk about the CRP program as well, how the CRP program and the Corporate Connect program is benefiting you. Talk about it, inshallah ta'ala, and give your review to the IOU as well so that we know what we are doing right and let us know where we can benefit as well and where we can improve as well. I appreciate the time that you all have given. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include it in our scales of good deeds and make it a source of barakah for all of those who are attending the session. I remind you again, if you have any questions, you can connect with me through my email address. That must have come to you when you received the email with all the links. It had the email address, crp.head. You can reach out to me over mail. Additionally, on social media as well. All right. Thank you so much for all your time. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.